Shabbat Shalom. Good morning, everyone. I am Rabbi Jenny Greenspan for Congregation Beth El Zedek. And this morning, we are having our Torah talk on Parashat Titzaveh. Um, we're about partway through the book of Exodus, kind of nearing, but not quite at the close of the book of Exodus. Um, and I will, uh, so this particular Torah portion uh, is a little bit unique, uh, which I'll get into in a moment, but it is the only one that's from the start of the book of Exodus through the end of the book of Deuteronomy, where we never see the name of Moshe. We never actually see Moses's name. Um, so it's an interesting and a little bit unique Torah portion in that way. Uh, as usual, while we uh, gather and say Shabbat Shalom, if you have a copy of the Et Chaim Humash, go ahead and grab it. Uh, if you would like a PDF of it, you'll go to bez613.org, go to Virtual Shabbat Resources, and scroll down to the Et Chaim link. Uh, and if you are using a different humash, I will be looking at Exodus chapter 28 and verse 9. Exodus 28 verse 9. If you are in an Et Chaim humash, I'll be on page 506. Uh, so, but for now, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome to Alex Binder, to Phyllis Luger, to Marty Lip, Alan Hamburger, Jim Roth, Marcia Sclair, probably Bruce as well. So Shabbat Shalom to everybody uh, gathering uh, here today. So I'll say it's an interesting moment with this Torah portion. Uh, this is the second to last one that we read together in the building. For me, this was the last one that I got to see you all in person last year uh, as I was on vacation the following week, uh, which Kitisa next week's Torah portion was the last one we were able to do, uh, to have done gathered in person. So there's a bittersweetness to me of coming back to this Torah portion. Um, it means I haven't gotten to see you in person in the congregation in a year uh, by, the, by the Jewish calendar. It's something very heavy that I know we are all holding. Um, to some degree, I mentioned that Moses' name is not mentioned in this week's Torah portion. Uh, he's the you to whom God refers, um, but his name never comes up. And it's not something you'd necessarily explicitly notice. It's just a quiet something missing. Uh, and I think that this year has made us all very familiar with the quiet things we miss or really the loud things that we miss. Um, but the quiet ones, the simple ones, the being around one another. Um, and as we'll see next week with the golden calf, it's not good for the Israelites to have Moses quietly missing either. Um, but we are getting through it. We are getting there. Uh, the vaccination news continues to be good as it gets further and further out. Uh, so don't need to go too deeply into that, but I am holding that and the little bit of the pain that there is with that this morning. Um, Shabbat Shalom and welcome also to Michael Kahn and to the Siegels. Um, so let's dive in into Jody Booker. So it's good to see everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Carol Steinfeld. Good to have everybody here. So let's dive in a little bit uh, to this particular bit of this Torah portion. So Titzaveh, as Rabbi Dennis mentioned last night on our Friday evening gathering uh, on Zoom, this is the Torah portion in which the, the Kohanim, the priestly class, are really set aside amongst the Israelites. Some rabbis say that that's why Moshe's name isn't mentioned, is so we can focus on his brother Aaron. Uh, who is to be the Kohen Gadol, the high priest. Um, and then much of this chapter, of chapter 28, is taken up with the subject of the, the priestly garments, what the priest should be wearing when they stand in front of everyone. Um, the, the particular linens and colors and stones uh, in the and it always comes during or around Purim. This Torah portion is almost always either the week right before or the week right after uh, Purim like it is this year. So there's always something very uh, uh, relevant on the calendar <laughs> to this Torah portion discussing the priestly garments and a holiday when we spend, many of us spend time in costume. Uh, and we think about the symbology of what we wear and what we wear um, can say about us or what it can bring out in us, uh, such as costumes for poor and often will like bring out an underlayer we don't always show uh, to the outside. We pretend to be someone else and inter and end up being more authentically ourselves in some ways. Um, and these priests are to wear these these particular garments. They use similar colors and fabrics to the Mishkan itself, to the tabernacle that we mentioned last week. If there is an element of holiness and a signal to the people watching that there is holiness happening. 
And then there's one particular piece that the Kohen Gadol alone wears that I want us to look at in verse 9. We're talking about the breastplate, the, the, the golden piece that comes over the high priest's garment. And on it you are, to, you are to take two lazuli stones, engrave them with the names of the sons of Israel, six of their names on one, and the names of the remaining six on the other, in the order of their birth. So on this stone, on this breastplate, we carry two stones, the names of the six children of Israel, which is to say, or the twelve children of Israel, sons of Israel, which is to say the names of the twelve tribes. The priests are to have every person or every ancestor leading back to Jacob, our, our uh, final of the three patriarchs, carry on, carried on his chest. So every time he does something on behalf of the community, he should be thinking as though he has the entirety of the people of Israel resting on his heart. So he re recognizes the gravity of what it is that he's doing and for whom he is uh, doing these sacrifices simultaneously for God and as a representation of the people, not of himself. He carries them on his heart. Um, if you look in the commentary on the bottom of Eitz Chaim, the very bottom ver on verse 12, um, it says, Aaron's, Aaron the high priest was to carry the names of Israel's tribes on his shoulders like a father carrying a young child on his shoulders to keep the child safe, according to Be'er Mayim Chaim. Aaron is told to wear the names over his heart. When Aaron had to make a decision regarding a fellow Israelite, he was to consult not only the rule book, but his heart with the weight of the people on it. The heart that rejoiced so unreservedly at his brother's good fortune is worthy to wear the emblem before God, says Tanhuma Midrash on the book of Shemot. That Aaron, who was uh, ready for Moses to be the one his younger brother, ready for Moses, his younger brother, to be the one who would rescue the people, was worthy to hold the whole people on his heart as he served God on their behalf. And I think that in many years I see some a certain beauty in these comments, and there's a certain reminder of the strength of holding people, reminder of, of uh, talismans. Maybe, maybe some of us have a necklace that was given to us by a loved one or a ring we inherited from someone. Um, or something like that. And yet I think that this year, I'm seeing an even more poignant uh, reminder. Um, because here we have Aaron the priest carrying the people on his heart to remember for whom he does this service. And this year, we have for a year now, um, been wearing a reminder whenever we are out of serving others, protecting others in the form of these masks that we wear, um, this face shield, these, these protective covers that are less for ourselves. They are a reminder that we affect others and that when we go out into the world, our actions can affect others. We wear this very reminder in a very, <laughs> a very clear place to us. It is, it is hard to forget that you have uh, the face covering on. Um, and it's a reminder that we do it out of holiness and out of caring for others around us, out of a hope to protect them. This past week, we, we heard that we passed over a half million Americans that died from COVID, uh, from a COVID infection, two and a half million worldwide, and it is impossible to know how many we have saved by also carrying everyone on our hearts. If you feel the tremendous loss, notice the quiet piece of Moses missing. Some of us may have a personal loss. Some of us simply can feel the weight of that number. We should remember as we wear the reminder of the community on our heart and on our face that we've also protected many more and that we continue to do holy work when we care for the entire community. Um, and so I hope that as we move forward into more and more uh, available vaccines and have the opportunity to start moving back toward something we recognize as normal, uh, that we also remember the holy work that it is to continue to protect those around us uh, while that process continues to happen. So Shabbat Shalom. I hope we have a week of noticing the holiness of others around us, protecting them, and knowing that they too protect us. Um, and 
remembering the holy act of covering our face to protect others. I say Shabbat Shalom. Uh, thank you for joining me here. And I say please go ahead and join us um, on our live stream uh, at 10 o'clock as we celebrate the Bar Mitzvah of Dagan Waldman uh, from our uh, sanctuary on the live stream. And uh, we and we wish you a Shabbat Shalom. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.